Mixed feelings about using tag metadata. Do you use them to help you build MOCs? Actually create a grouped page. Yeah, so I think that's something that we need to explore a little bit in, in the workshop, Guthrie and Guthrie. Sorry, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. But I will say that um, the cleanest, uh, safest way to think about tags right now for you would be just what would your major tags be and, and how would you put them in one of your home maps? So, you know, this writings MOC, which you can find um, online to check out, that might be a good example. A, a thought jogger of just how can I use these um, judiciously, like sparsely, without going over overboard too soon. Any ideas on separate vaults? I often have ideas that come up during work meetings. Yeah, totally. You don't want to work uh, mix work meetings with idea notes, but you want to remember the spark. So you know there are definitely a few ways to do that. You can. Like just use timestamps, which is well. That's that's the beauty, actually. Can I dive in? I think so. So let me let me just make sure my file explorer is good. File window, I should say. So if I go into the light kit, and oh, I need to open it. Open Vault. Here's what you can do. You can open a new folder within the same vault, actually. So like it and timestamps. So I don't have anything other than that template note. But if you wanted to do this, you can create your work notes, your timestamped notes in a completely separate vault in Obsidian, let's say but you won't get any clutter for your ideas. This is a subfolder. It exists right here. I just have drilled in. That's one solution. I mean, or you could just do a completely separate folder. However, if you think you're going to be linking ideas, uh, I don't like that approach because then it just it creates a lot of friction and, and mental kind of unease with where stuff lives. So maybe you want to try to dial in like just drill in to open a new vault this way. There are probably some other solutions, but we, we can you know look at that a little bit later. Thank you, Aaron. Nick was able to accelerate his career by developing and working with maps. Um, I think I'm thinking of changing careers and would like to know how maps can help with this purpose. Okay. This one's really important and you know, your mileage may vary. But when you create a map of content, you are future proofing your, your skill set in many ways, your ability to talk about a domain of knowledge. And so, you know, if I create a map of content that feels pretty good about habits, and if I do another one about personal development and another one about mental models, you know, this is sort of giving me this um, overlapping Venn diagram of different domains that relate in interesting ways. And let's say, you know, I was working at, as, um, I don't know, a, a teacher somewhere in high school and they have layoffs. They're going remote um, for whatever reason, no longer, uh, my job is gone. If I've been building up these maps, this might give me an opportunity to enter into a, you know, a different profession, a different industry. So this is optionality. It, uh, I hate using the quote brackets like that, but just whenever I use a word, I'll throw those up. Optionality to, to bounce into different careers and whatnot. Um, just from, what I'm trying to get at is, it's just from you exercising your joy and interests and hobbies and developing developing your sense of these these domains just through that activity you've created value for yourself so when the next pandemic hits you you can quickly pivot 
potentially pivot into a new area. Um, because you never know, like the world is a fast, fast changing place. But if you've not just churned and burned ideas throughout, throughout your time, but if you've captured them and you've grown them, then they become your assets. They're like your bank account. And when times are tough, you go to that bank account and you, you start being like, okay, how can I apply this information to the current landscape of, of the world when it comes to my career? I hope that helps. I, I, what I'm not saying is if you do this, then you know any job is yours and in, in any industry, certainly not. I'm just saying it, it helps you be creative with your options in the future. That said, um, when, I, when I bounced, um, when I moved to Los Angeles four and a half years ago, uh, my girlfriend had a teaching, my very long-term girlfriend, had a teaching job um, at UCLA. And I used that, I decided to move uh, with her and, and I still have a fitness boxing business and whatnot, but this allowed me finally access to the true industry. So when you work in the entertainment industry, you kind of have to be in Los Angeles if you wanna make you know the connections and do things the right way. Um, and so I, I applied the concepts that I've been growing and I made a few special maps of content around how can I make it in, in this industry? And, you know, that was initially, it was about like understanding the industry itself, like the etiquette, you know, the expectations, the hidden code of that industry. Um, and then I could reference notes to that. And then I had another one that was tracking um, people and their interests and different things. A version of that we will be using in the workshop, which I'm really excited about. It will be like privacy protected. Uh, so don't worry about that. But for the people who are in it, we're going to see how we can, how we're related to each other in our passions and ideas. And we'll use the Obsidian framework actually for that. So we'll have a real live class example of of that. And I think it'll kind of help us work with each other and, and get to know each other. Um, I could keep going here, but I'm just going to, to move on to the next one. I'd like to follow up on Greg's question. I'm curious to learn more, about, hear more about the place for top down input. You're working on this big article. Yeah, so this is definitely a top down issue because you know what you're talking about, but it can also be bottom up depending on from where you're starting. So I approach my writing with a clear sense of some things that I know I want to discuss in the article. How to best think about relating this. Oh, it's Joel. Hey, Joel. <laughs> I didn't see that until just now. <laughs> um, I'm working on article third generation. Ah, of course. Yeah. Um, so I approach my writing with a clear sense of some things I want. To, how to best think about relating this sense of a top down sense of purpose. Well, I, I'm not familiar enough to know. I would call not enough familiar enough to riff on this quickly, but you know, and you don't have to append MOC here. I just, it's a little bit easy for me to find it uh, as I look, but then, you know, you could, let me copy and paste this again, give that a title. And then I might just quickly outline, uh, I won't call it heading, but, um, Topic one, MOC, and then, you know, I'd have link, something like this, and, and they just come, right? Because you, you, you probably have these notes. You're not starting from scratch, I know that. So then you can just start putting them in place. And then, you know, let's say link 20 is also, you know, that's the nice thing about a map of content, you can have a link in different places. And so I think it'd be about considering how you can, you know, I, this would be the top down approach where you're starting with your topic, you're starting with the title, and then you drill down to the to topics. I mean, think like five paragraph essay, perhaps, you know, just different um, templates that you skeletons that you can use outlines, which which one is going to work best for your, you know, research for this project. And uh, something important is making sure if you're working with others that you you kind of figure out what topics that, how they see things too. So you can kind of decide 
what these topics can be and how they can look. I hope that's somewhat of a helpful beginning. Okay. I know this is a quick demo and you weren't focused on creating a real chunking note. If you were, how would you indicate that the Wikipedia entry is not your writing? Yeah, I totally would indicate that by the way. So thanks for bringing it up, Scott. Let's go back to chunking. Yeah, I was working way too fast, so my apologies there. But yeah, I would just quote it and I might just do that or I might even go just a step further and, and just do wiki because in theory, I'd have all my thoughts right here as I was going. And then this just gives me a little bit of a reference. Um, yeah, I would do something like that. And I would try to keep it about this short and I would and I would probably like rewrite this or make sure that they're the best quotes that I think are are the most important. So that very good point though. It, when in doubt, add those those quotations. Oh, and you're you're also right too. What what you mentioned is you can just as easily do this. I just find that sometimes then I have to you know it's just a markdown thing where you might have to do it for a couple other notes, but it certainly looks nice that way. So especially when you, you're writing in line. So I, I actually would say that what you showed there is a, a pretty good approach. So both quotes and um, the quote syntax would be the ideal option. Only if I want the quote to stand out though. I'll, I'll put that little caveat on it because you know, I think that kind of gets to where, where I want to focus a lot is not just to heavily link everything where it's unreadable, but figure out ways we're, we're telling stories. So each note should really direct the, the viewer's eye to where you want the, the eye to go. And when I say viewer, I mean your future self and any outside audience. So it's like, do I want for, 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 for my theme, do I want Wiki to stand out this much? Well, I, I obviously I don't, but uh, so I'm fine with just the quotes. So that's another little aesthetic um, consideration. It seems like folders and MOCs can both serve as workbenches, places to temporarily gather notes. What are the disadvantages and advantages uh, of using one or the other? So we have the option now. You're right, Joel. Uh, I find that the MOC is usually the way to go just because it's faster. Uh, it's so much faster to be able to hit you know, your bracket button and then start compiling notes this way. Um, however, if you really, our minds still do work in, in hierarchy and the folders still have value. So there is a place where you might just want to keep things in a specific folder. Um, you know, habits example, and to make this point clear, I would put, you know, incubation. What I'm trying to tell myself is this is temporary and, you know, I'm just using it for now. Oh, sorry, scrolling too quickly. And I can put all this stuff in here, but once I feel something is good, what I would do is like, um, like begets like, let's check this out. Hey, this is pretty good. I'm happy with this. So it was in this folder. I'm just gonna click and drag and plop it into the main section. So you can kind of use it as an incubation chamber. Okay, I feel good about this note and I, I can throw it out uh, because it's, I mean, look, it's, it's well connected. It's very well connected. I'm happy with it. Um, so, you know, th there's some options. I try to avoid the folders because I find that after a while that I'm hunting for where it is. I'm like, is it in the habits example yet? Or is it, and then I'm back to where I don't want to be, which is like hunting and twirling down folders. So, you know, that's, that's the thing to be careful about.